The Washington, D.C. Steel Rock Report is disgusting and revealing. We will not sacrifice our children to any such type school system, and you can write that down. The, fe the federal troops in Mississippi, Governor Barnett and Governor Johnson and distinguished citizens from that state, could better be used in guarding the safety of the citizens of Washington, D.C., where it is even unsafe to walk or go to a ball game, and that in the nation's capital. I was safer than a B-29 bomber over Japan during the war in an air raid than the people of Washington are walking in the White House neighborhood. I'm for pure Americanism. White supremacy! Listen to me, Americans. America for Americans. We got to throw rocks and hurl bombs. Black bombs for black foreigners. Well, I believe that the uh, girls in the dormitories wouldn't go for it very much having a uh, colored roommate as one of their roommates. How do you I, yourself feel? Well, I, I wouldn't myself like it. My fellow Georgians, this is Emmy Thompson, candidate for governor. I want to talk with you for a moment about public schools. The recent Supreme Court decision has caused much concern in our state. I want you to know exactly what my position is on this issue. I am for separate schools for the races at all costs. Thank you. The preceding was a paid political announcement, a commercial service available to all candidates. So show those rabble-rousers they can't breathe our white air and go to school with our white children. America for Americans! America for Americans! A closer example is Atlanta, Georgia. The city officials pawn for political reasons over school integration and then build barricades to stop residential integration. What hypocrisy. Let us send this message back to Washington by the representatives who are here with us today that from this day we are standing up and the heel of tyranny does not fit the neck of an upright man. That we intend to put the offensive and clear our fight for freedom across this nation, wielding the balance of power we know we possess in the Southland. At a rally in Macon, Georgia, Imperial Wizard Green defended the new Klan. We don't hate the Negro. God made him black, and he made us white. And you will find this laid out in the 11th chapter of Genesis, in which he segregated the races. And we knowing that for 5,000 years, the white man has been the supreme race we, the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, intend to keep it, the white race. Well, let's get down to basics. Uh, the separate restrooms, the separate uh, lunch counters, things of this type, the separate schools. How do you justify this if you think of him as an American citizen like you are? Well, I, again, I don't see that there's any special connection. Uh, why, why should the uh, Negro feel any more discriminated against than the white man? for associating with his own kind. Uh, white people who are segregated don't seem to resent it, and I don't think most niggers resent it. They seem to prefer that. We invite you to come and be with us, for you are the Southern mind and the Southern spirit and the Southern philosophy. You are Southerners too and brothers with us in our fight. What I have said about segregation in the race for governor goes double this day, and what I have said, too, about some federal judges goes triple this day. Keep our schools white! Keep them white! That's right! Keep them white! I'm against Catholic! Hallelujah, man! Hallelujah! Against Jews! Hallelujah! 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 Against niggas! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Against niggas! Hallelujah! Against niggas! Hallelujah! That one! Let's get that black!
boy before he married my daughter. Hallelujah. do seem to prefer that. Outwardly, they have shown little interest in the battle against integration. There were no Mississippi Negroes among the Freedom Riders. Jackson Negro College students have attempted to use the White Library, but even this drew no positive support from the rest of the Negro community. But it is difficult to say what they think, for they have no voice. The nearest to a Negro voice in Jackson is Medgar Evers, for seven years local secretary of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Just how many Negroes Evers speaks for is open to question, but certainly the majority are not NAACP members. But from this day, and from this hour, and from this minute, we give the word of a race of honor that we will tolerate their boot in our face no longer, and let those certain federal judges put that in their opium pipes of power and smoke it for what it is worth. We can no longer hide our head in the sand and tell ourselves that the ideology of our free fathers is not in the past, and it is not being set by another idea for it is. We are faced with an idea that if a centralized government... Yeah, done. Oh, tastes good. <laughs> like a cigarette should. <laughs> and openly, at least, they have not asked for leadership. But leadership is on the way, if not from the ranks of Mississippi Negroes, then from elsewhere. One of them is Charles Oldham, national chairman of the Congress of Racial Equality, known as CORE. CORE is the sponsor of the Freedom Riders and Oldham, their spokesman, in Mississippi. The ultimate goal of our organization is the elimination of discrimination against individuals because of race or color. As it runs the full gamut of human desire, including the theory that everyone has voting rights without the spiritual responsibility of preserving freedom. Our founding fathers recognized those rights but only within the framework of those spiritual responsibilities. But the strong, simple faith and sane reasoning of our founding fathers has long since been forgotten, as the so-called progressives and liberals tell us that our Constitution was written for horse and buggy days. So were the Ten Commandments. It is the changing world of which we are told. It is called new and liberal. It is as old as the oldest dictator. It is degenerate and decadent. As the national racism of Hitler's Germany persecuted a national minority to the whim of a national majority, so the international racism of the liberals seek to persecute the international white minority to the whim of the international colored majority so that we are footballed about to according to the favor of the Afro-Asian thought that the Belgian survivors of the Congo cannot present their case to a Washington Times Commission nor the Portuguese of Angola nor the survivors of Castro nor the citizens of Oxford, Mississippi. It is the... For the first time in American history, and the writers of which some have admittedly belonged to as many as half a hundred communist front organizations, it is this theory that led this same group of men to briefly bear the ungodly core of that philosophy in forbidding little school children to say a prayer. And we find the evidence of that ungodliness even in the removal of the words, in God we trust from some of our dollar bills. Against this charged background, the issue came to a head. 
A bus carrying a mixed group of whites and Negroes started across the South with the announced intention of testing segregation in bus terminals, which had been ruled out by the U.S. Supreme Court. The bus was attacked in Alabama, its passengers injured. Next stop, Jackson. Mississippi had observed Alabama's handling of the riders and decided upon another course. The bus was loaded with armed troops and followed by 16 patrol cars and an airplane. All this at a cost of thousands of dollars a day. Jackson citizens watched by the hundreds, jostling each other for a better view. Swamped by the Khrushchev-like protection, the Freedom Riders stepped off the bus, some still bearing the bandages of their encounter with Alabama. They made their way through the surrounding crowd to the inside of the station. Some walked to a restroom marked white only, others to the white only coffee shop. A policeman ordered them to move on. They stood quietly. Another order, then each was arrested and led outside to a waiting paddy wagon. A law that tells us that we can or cannot buy or sell our very homes except by his condition and except at his discretion. It is the spirit of power thirst that led that same president to launch a full offensive of 25,000 troops against the university in his own country and against his own people when this nation maintains only 6,000 troops in the beleaguered city of Berlin. There was no official mention of segregation or integration. The charges were breach of the peace and inciting to riot. The trial was short. The sentence, a $200 fine, which was suspended. The suspension was refused, and the riders elected to work it out on the county jail farm. Since as free men, we do not recognize any government's right to give freedom or deny freedom. No government erected by man has that right. As Thomas Jefferson has said, quote, the God who gave us life gave us liberty at the same time. No king holds the right of liberty in his hands, in the quote, nor does any ruler in the American government, whether he be in Montgomery or Washington, D.C. <laughs> I am opposed in this race for governor by a candidate who is financed by a mammoth banking chain and the Atlanta political machine. This Atlanta political machine consists of the mayor of Atlanta, the management of the Atlanta Constitution and Journal, and Martin Luther King. In short, I am running against an IBM computing machine consisting of Ivan, Bill, and Mills. I am making this fight for governor for the rank and file of Georgians against a machine which stands for special privilege, unlimited integration, total destruction of state sovereignty, and continuation of federal court encroachment. I shall march in this campaign under the flag of states' rights, preservation of our great institutions, traditions, and customs. I shall wage unrelentless war upon those who would destroy our Georgia way of life and make a shambles of the Bill of Rights of the Constitution of our nation. It is time for all white Georgians to stick together and to block vote. The political machine has promised to deliver the Negro block vote to my opponent. I shall be the governor of all the people of Georgia. 